Hi, a couple of tips before Yom Kippur. I'm going to do this really fast because I keep trying to do it and I just get sidetracked and distracted and there's so many things going on. It's actually very interesting because the Nitivo Shalom says that that is what happens. I don't know if you guys noticed in your lives, that's what happens during the 10 days of Tuva. The Yetzer Hara gets really freaked out because it knows, he knows, she knows, I don't know what the Yetzer Hara is, it knows that um, if a person takes these days seriously and really um, puts effort into changing, and if enough Jews do that, they have the power during these days when Hashem is just sitting and listening and waiting for us, we have the power to totally bring Mashiach and the end of days and Yetzir HaRa will have no more uh, job left to do, no more need to be in existence and he will just disappear. So he puts so much effort into getting us distracted. Like, did you notice things go crazy during these 10 days and they just, like, you can't think straight. For some reason, like this, I, I got this whopping bill from the tax uh, bureau, you know, saying if you don't give in your tax returns, which I thought I gave in months ago, you're going to get like a 6,000 check bill, right? So I like running a whole day I spent just dealing with going and getting these tax returns in. And, you know, with Corona and there's all these days that they don't accept people, whatever. Just, I don't need to go into it. But every day was another logistical nightmare of a day. For no reason. So Nitzvah Shalom says, first of all, just try and pay attention to these days and make time, even if it's hard, and even if there's distractions, to put some effort into specifically thinking about the roots of the different um, flaws that you have. Don't think about the actions. Because it says, it's interesting, it says in Eicha, I don't know exactly why it has to do with Yom Kippur, but it's, I mean, it does have to do with Yom Kippur, but I don't know why it says it in Eicha, which is a book that's read on Tisha B'Av. But it says, Nachpesa drachenu v'nachkora v'nashuva el Hashem. We will search our ways and we will investigate them and we will come back to Hashem. It doesn't say we will search our actions or we will search our transgressions. But rather, we will investigate what the ways are, the derech, the, the underlying root of what it is that is going wrong in our lives. Because he says, these days, Nitzvah Shalom says, have so much power, you can change your entire life in a few days. Like, every day is so powerful. And if you do that, and basically what you have to realize is that the root of everything, the root of tshuva, first of all, the main goal of tshuva is to come back to Hashem. The Rambam says this specifically. Yesterday, before you do tshuva, you are so far from Hashem. Today, after you did tshuva, you are davuk Hashem. You're attached to God. So the power of tshuva is that you can come from being distant to being close to Hashem. And that's the end of point, the end result. So if we can go over our flaws from the last year or our transgressions, but not so much look at the actions. And I, I spoke Lashon Hara. I didn't keep Shabbat properly. I didn't um, uh, pray enough. I didn't say blessings enough. No, look at the underlying root. What is the problem? What is keeping you away from Hashem in those ways? Do you see a theme? Do you see one root, which is the problem? Like for me, I was looking at my some things that I'm doing, and it seems to me that I am lacking fear of God. I'm lacking yirat shamayim. I don't really get that there's something so terrible about doing something that is distancing me from God. So I need to work on that, on increasing fear of God. It's not so hard. I can start looking at the tragedies that happened just this year to people. I can start looking at certain scary things that could be happening in my life, to my family. And that increases fear, okay? Work on the root and that will lend um, importance and, and really it will lead you in the direction that you're looking to get to because it'll lead you right back. And if you realize that the goal is to get close to Hashem, if you're attached to Hashem, through other ways it could be through other mitzvot through learning through increasing your learning this year just say to yourself you know what i'm going to increase my learning torah because that is going to bring me close to hashem 
or I'm going to read a specific book that I know is going to be inspiring for me and will bring me closer to Hashem. That is the goal. And anybody, he says, who's attached to Hashem, the kasher Yehudi davuk Hashem, when a person is attached to Hashem, mitaher. That's it. You're, you're like, hold on a second. Kasher Yehudi davuk Hashem, mitaher moho. His whole mind, his brain is purified and his lave, his heart is purified because you can't be attached to Hashem and just go along doing all the wrong things you were doing. You're close to Hashem. You're living with God. You feel like, oh my God, God is watching. Not only is God watching, but God is in a relationship with me. I'm in a relationship with God. So your whole life changes. So look at the root. Focus on the goal, okay? The root of the flaws and also the goal of tshuva. Okay, and that's what we should be focusing on. It's much easier. It feels like, I mean, it feels like it's much easier. It might not be much easier, but it's much quicker. Okay, like instead of doing one and two and three, which is more like putting a patch on the the transgression, like I'm putting a Band-Aid on. Instead, get to the root. And then there's a chance that you're going to actually do a good job of coming back to Hashem and doing tshuva. Then he says, okay, one more really important tip. Let me see if I have anything else to say really quickly. Yes, I have one more thing to say. And that is something I just learned with my friend Debbie. We were sitting the other day, and this is really interesting. It says in the book of Nehemiah, I don't know if you guys know, it's a prophet. It's one of the prophets, Nehemiah. And apparently in the days of Nehemiah, he was a leader of the Jewish people in the time of the Galut after the first um uh, destruction of the first temple before the building of the second temple and apparently the Jewish people were about to go back and build the second temple like this was the time period when they were going to start the building and they found a safer Torah that they had forgotten about or that they really didn't know much about and they were reading in the safer Torah and they were so upset because they realized they forgot a lot of the mitzvot and they hadn't been keeping the mitzvot and they came to Nefemia who was the leader, and they were crying. And they said, we're so upset. And apparently that day was Rosh Hashanah. It was the day of judgment. And they were just crying and crying. They didn't know what to do with themselves. What what kind of a judgment are we going to get if this is how we've been behaving? And Nehemiah said this to them. <sighs> you should eat and you should drink and you should be happy. Ki chedvat Hashem he ma'uzchem. You, Hashem is happy when you feel strong and confident. And the way that Nitzvot Shalom explains this is that, hold on a second, is that we need to be confident that Hashem loves us and accepts us and is going to accept our tshuva and that no matter how far away we are from Hashem, Hashem is with us and Hashem is waiting for us and Hashem is happy when you are confident that you are going to have a good year and you're not sitting around trembling and sad and crying. No, that's not what Hashem wants to see. Chedvat Hashem, Hashem's happiness is your strength and confidence. And this is amazing. And you need to actually work on bitachon in the spiritual realm. Trust in God that he will give you a good year. That if you're having a certain trouble, if a child is suffering, if you are suffering, if you have an illness, if something is going wrong in your life, if you have no if you have financial struggles, if you have emotional struggles, whatever it is, if you are confident that no matter how far away you are from Hashem, that Hashem will give you a good year because He loves you and He is your parent, then Hashem will actually follow through and He will be so proud of you that that's how you feel about Him, that He will give you that good judgment. Okay, so that's a really amazing thing to think about. And I, and I, I realize that that could be true because like I, like sometimes my kids can ask me for something and I feel like, seriously like you lost it why are you asking me for this again or you know a kid will ask me for another pair of shoes right after they bought a pair of shoes two months ago like hello this is, stuff is expensive but then at the same time it makes me realize that this child knows that i am their parent 
And I am going, who else are they going to turn to for the things that they need and they want? And even though they don't deserve it, they know that they can ask me for it. They're confident that in my, because I love them, I will give it to them. And that in and of itself makes me want to give it to them. Because I'm happy that they feel confident asking me. There's people from dysfunctional families who don't feel confident asking their parents for things. So that confidence is what Hashem wants to see. That we know He loves us. And that we don't forget it. And even if we're going through horrible, scary times. And even though bad things are happening, we at the same time know that Hashem loves us and Hashem is doing this for our good and will get us out of it and will give us a good year. Okay, so let me just end with this because I want you to hear it from the inside. Um, hold on a second. Okay, so basically this is this is what it says. Hamtakat hadinim, the dinim, the the just judgment will be sweet. Al yedeshe Yehudi yodea by the fact that a Jew knows ki yuchelik eloka mi ma'al that he is part of Hashem that he has part of Hashem in him that he has an eshama v'hakadosh baruch hu shochen itam betoch tum atam and Hashem is with you no matter what wherever you are as impure and as far as you are Hashem is with you in you mamash next to you. Okay, the Yeshu Behirut Ha'emuna Vabitachon, and he has emuna and trust. She Hashemit Barach Tamid Imo Ve'Einenu Ozvo. That Hashem is always with him. That everything is for the good. That Hashem loves him. You, Hashem loves you, no matter what. She Al Yedezem Meorer Et Harachamim Milemala, and that is how we awaken the mercy from above. And it's like Hashem Tzilcha. Hashem is your shadow. What you show Hashem that you expect of Him is what you get. That's what Hashem reflects back to you. The, the same way that you expect Hashem to behave with you, He will behave with you. Right? That is an amazing tip. Let's keep that in mind. Have a Gemar Chatimat Tova, everybody. A good Yom Kippur, a meaningful, easy fast. And uh, we'll meet at the end of it or we'll meet after for in time for Sukkot.